Hello guys and welcome. In this video I will try to remake the game of chess from scratch. Feature by feature I will try to build a complete chess game, while having fun along the way of course. I started playing this game in my childhood, now I'm 28 and I still enjoy playing it, even though I'm a bad player. Anyway, make yourself comfortable and enjoy the video guys. I will use C++ language to remake the game because I'm familiar with it, and the very first thing that I have to do is to open a window in Windows operating system. It is completely white, so I want to fill it with some nice dark grey color. I will also turn the full screen on for this window, just for the convenience of people who are watching this video. Anyway, the next thing to do is to create a board. And I can achieve this by first rendering a quad, and then somehow apply a texture to this quad. And clearly we need a texture first, because I do not want to download anything from the internet. So I've created a very simple little program that will generate me a chessboard checker texture based on colors that I will provide it with. And hey, it works! But obviously I will not use this black and white one. Why? Because imagine us having this black happy little pawn. This pawn will become unhappy, because if it goes to the next square no one will see it. And that's bad. So, I've been experimenting a lot with colors. I've created multiple color schemes, but to be honest, I'm still not sure which one I like the most. Also, one very nice feature that I want to implement is to have letters be printed for the names of files and numbers be printed for the names of ranks. And I mean, I did just that. I went to the Google page to download one nice font called Bangers. I've then loaded this font into the game, worked and refined this big chunk of code, and we got a result which looks just like this. And I should admit, I'm really happy for the implementation, and the reason for that is that I've made it to work in a way so that the color for the letter and for the number will be taken as the color of the opposite color cell. And because of that it works nicely across all other color schemes. And I'm really happy with that. Now, having a chessboard is of course pretty cool. But to play some chess we need some chess pieces, right? One of my favorite chess influencers is Hikaru Nakamura. He is by the way also one of the best chess players in the world. Anyway, on his streams and videos he always plays with those nice pieces that I really like. So guess what? I've managed to find and download images for those pieces, both for black and for white. With those images what I can do is that I can use them to add some pieces to the board. And words cannot quite tell how happy I was to see the first one being rendered. Now if I was able to add one, why don't I add another one? And so on and so on and so on. And so just like that I've added the first row for the white pieces, then the row of white pawns, the row of black pawns, and finally the last row for black pieces. It is important to understand though that those pieces are just images, I cannot move them or interact with them in any way. Well, so I want to detect which square my mouse is currently overlapping. If I start to interact with the square with my mouse and there was any piece inside this square, this piece will start following my cursor. And if I release my mouse, the move will happen. And just like that any piece can now make any move. But the weird thing is that those moves can be absolutely absurd. For example, pawn jumping straight to the opposite rank, kings flying around, bishops walking horizontally, vertically, I don't know. This is definitely not how real chess pieces move. And do you hear the sounds when I move my pieces? Well, to be honest, I've stolen them from chess.com webpage. But I should admit, because I'm making my game from scratch in C++, it was very challenging to implement, it may seem, such a simple sound playback system to play such a simple sound. Back to chess programming. At the start of the game I make the engine to calculate all the moves that white pieces can potentially make. And we can actually preview those moves with a nice sort of visualization system that I've made. Let's say that white makes one of the most popular moves, pawn to e4. At this point what will happen? The game will compute all the moves that black pieces can potentially make, which will actually allow black to make a move as well. And now white pawn has a choice. It can either go one square forward, or it can capture black pawn diagonally. You get the idea, guys. I do not want to guide you through each move that I make, because 
Well, I assume that most of the people who are watching this video are already familiar with the rules of the game of chess. But anyway, there are a few things that I want to talk about in a little bit more detail. Speaking about pawn movement, I did implement, and I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong, the unpassant capturing. Apparently this is the move which is not everyone aware of, even though it is sometimes very useful. Well, I'll be honest, I've learned about it recently as well. <laughs> also, some kind of a replay system was implemented. I can make a bunch of moves, like for example those ones, and then I can unmake them, one by one. I can also remake them, one by one. When implementing rules of the game, I was trying to be very careful to some tiny little details. For example, in this situation I can take this free pawn, and the point is that the black horsey will not be able to eat white horsey, because of this bishop which will give a check to the king otherwise. And hey, it is a very important rule of chess. You cannot make any move that will make your king to be in check. On the other hand, in this situation, if the knight makes any move, then the bishop which is standing behind it will give a check to the king, and I do also account for that. Oh, and by the way, this is how I visualize giving a check. Both the king and the piece that gave a check are highlighted in red. I just thought it would be a nice feature to have. Castling was also implemented, both to the right and to the left. If I for some reason want to reverse my board, I can also do that. And one of the final things that I wanted to implement is pawn promotion. When the pawn reaches the final rank, I can select a piece and, well, promote into it. Ah, I like it very much. <laughs> if the game ends in a draw, such pop-up squares will appear. And this is how giving a checkmate looks. Once again. Remember guys how in the beginning I've told you that in order to render pieces I use those images? What I didn't mention though is that for some performance reasons I combined those images into one huge texture atlas. And the point is, if I have another texture atlas, I can use it to render pieces as well. Those are some classical chess pieces, you can play with them if you prefer. But also, if you are a creative person and you are able to create such a texture atlas, you can share it with me and I'll be able to use it in my game as well. Now the game has pretty much been all put together. And I'll be honest guys, I'm really, really happy both for the implementation and for the result. Now guys, let me show you one game that I played long, long time ago. This will be very, very short, I promise. Keep in mind guys, that I was 6 years old kid trying to learn how to play the game. <laughs> yeah, I was made it this way by my father more than 20 years ago now. But hey, what you gonna do when you just started playing chess? Thanks for watching guys. From the bottom of my heart I wish you all the best and goodbye.